three Stuart steam plants, boiler works, part 11. Assembling the three boilers on the kitchen table, then trying various steam plant layouts to see which combinations look the best. You are currently looking at the repainted side panels which are fitted with heat insulation on the inside. I've covered that part of the job quite extensively in previous videos. Now it's time to assemble the parts. I now have a complete kit of parts for two 501 boilers and one 504 boiler. I'm going to start with the 504. I produced a separate video recently about a 504 boiler. I refurbished it and sold it. And this 504 reassembly is no different really from the previous one. But I needed to include it as it's part of this series. Assembling the 500 range of boilers is fairly simple, particularly the 504. But as you will see, the design of the 501 type boiler is very different to the 504. All this needs is the two side panels carefully bolting in position and being extremely careful that the screwdriver doesn't slip off the bolt and scratch the sides. These are dome head bolts, so it really is important to make sure that the screwdriver is in the centre of the bolt. It's less likely to come loose that way. These brass bolts, by the way, are 4BA. And strangely enough, the holes in the cast iron seem quite tight. Possibly they were full of paint. Before bolting these panels to the main supports, I made holes in the thermal insulation with a small screwdriver. This made the job a whole lot easier. That's one side completed, then I turned the boiler around to fit the other side panel in an identical fashion to what you've just seen. And believe me, I really am being careful that this screwdriver doesn't slip off the bolt head. It's really important not to over tighten these bolts because otherwise where the bolts fit will crush the heat insulation and this will make the corners of the side panels look unsightly. It's worth mentioning that the bolts at the top where the boiler is need to be shorter than the bolts at the bottom. It's not so important there. If the bolts are too long and contact the boiler that is a major problem so bear this in mind if you're assembling a 504 boiler. The length of the bottom bolts is really not important. Here I'm using a small screwdriver for two reasons. The first being to make a hole in the heat insulation and the second to make it easier to align the bolt with the hole in the casting. Or should I call it a machine screw? Underneath the front of the 504 boiler someone's made a hole. This is for a pipe from a condenser to go up the chimney to exhaust the steam. Pity it's not in the middle. I have to do this with both of the 501 boilers. Back to the 504 boiler, it's now sat on the table in a homogeneous state, which means it's completely assembled. The construction of the 500 and 501 boilers is very different to a 504. In some ways it's a little bit more difficult to put together but the main difference is the absence of slot-headed screw heads on each corner of each of the side panels. Instead, the 500 and 501 series use threaded rods like this. The construction method is quite different. These rods go through holes in the main castings, and they're quite fiddly to locate, but once you get there and put the nuts on, it's OK. Unlike the 504, you can actually insert the boiler once a 501 or 500 series boiler is partially assembled. Because of the different size of a 504 boiler, this method doesn't work very well because you would bend the side panels. But on these smaller boilers, until you tighten up the threaded bars, you can insert the boiler into the casting because there is sufficient play in the rods to allow this to happen. It's really important before tightening the nuts on the end of the rods to make sure the boiler sits square on the bench and doesn't wobble about. You can do this quite easily by slightly moving the position of the boiler's upright frames. If you don't do this, you can have a big problem. You may shear off one of the feet, and this has actually happened to one of these boilers. In this clip, I'm assembling the second 501 boiler and I'm making sure that the bottom rods are in line 
with the casting at the other end. Really, I'm actually working a little bit too close to the edge of the table when I look back at this video. And dropping these cast parts onto my slate floor would not do them any good at all. This is not going to happen now though because I put a nut on the end of the rod. Here once again I'm demonstrating that the boiler does not sit square on the table. And it's not my table, it's quite a strong table and it's very flat. And once again the solution is to slacken off the nuts, twist the boiler frames until they sit square on the table and then re-tighten the nuts on the end of the rods. By now you may be wondering why am I working on the kitchen table it's just that there's more room. I have some other jobs in progress in the little workshop. And here we have three boilers, two 501s and one 504 boiler, which now allows me to place them next to the respective engines to figure out the size of baseboards needed. This beautiful Stuart Victoria already has a water tank, the square thing behind it, and the piece of copper tubing that's obscured by the water tank is going to be the condenser for this particular plant. One of the 501 steam plants already has a water tank, but I'll need to make a water tank for the other one, as well as two condensers, one for each engine. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.